Good evening everyone and welcome to another video of Clark's Cookery. Today is Friday, June 19, 2020. I want to show you some post damage and recovery from the tropical storm which we had almost two weeks ago. We'll start right here with our cucumber plant. As you can see, there's been a lot of dieback from some of our previous videos and there's some insect damage and you see the sunflowers are all beat up and blown over. I, my plants are still producing though. You can see two cucumbers. These are the straight eight variety if you remember. I can pick them pretty soon. This right here is still one of the rosemary bushes. It survived. It's getting really big. You can see some of the new growth on the top here. Right here. We have one of my squash plants which survived. You can see I'm, I need to get out here with the neem oil. I'm starting to have some issues with powdery mildew, which, you know, I'm not surprised because of all of the humidity and the heat that we're starting to have now. And you can tell I've had to pull out a lot of my zucchini and squash plants. If you remember from another video, this, this was not even passable. You can get in here. But I'm thankful to still have some of these plants. Over here, for some of my beefsteak uh, tomatoes. Actually, the top of this plant, where it had fallen over and broken off onto the ground. So this, I mean, it's almost at least a good two feet is missing off of the top here. But it survived. You can see I'm starting to get some large sized tomatoes here. This is a beefsteak variety. I hope it starts to turn red soon. So I have a question. How big do these beefsteak tomatoes get? From my reading, I've never actually grown this variety, but what from but from my reading, I've read that it they can get up to a pound. These should be <laughs> very interesting. I can't wait to see these. And you might notice around the base of the plant here, this darker looking soil. I need to put some more soil. You can see my roots here. That is actually chicken manure compost, which I side dress my plants with, and I discussed side dressing a little bit in a previous video. Over here is another tomato bush. I staked them up on bamboo canes, which I got from my local farm store. Next year, I will look into getting some larger cages. I'm seeing a little insect activity here. I probably have some hornworms at this point. I haven't sprayed with seven dust in a long time. This is doing very well. This is actually a bell pepper plant, which I thought I was losing because you can see the leaves curling. It's from the heat and it could be some from fertilizer burn because I did give them some calcium nitrate. I won't show on film how I did it because I'm sure what I did wasn't in the safety manual. <laughs> so, but just take my word for it. I, I overdid it. I'm starting to get some blooms here. And this plant is doing really well. This is another bell pepper, but there's no... Well, there's a small one. So maybe I'll get a pepper soon. And this right here is some habaneros that I've been struggling with. Maybe they'll do something. They look a little better than they did before. The top of this had kind of died, but it's, it's coming back. So, I'm patiently waiting. Over here, this is zucchini, which you can see is starting to get powder and mildew. I'll come out here with me all this weekend and treat it. There's a few balloons. I don't really see any fruit on here yet. Oh yes, there is a fruit. You can see the zucchini. It's going really well. There's another tomato bush. It's not as many leaves, but it does have fruit. I haven't had an issue with blossom in rot. Again, I use the calcium nitrate, which uh, helps prevent that. I have a basil, which is blooming. It's very large. I mean, it's almost a tree tree. This is a yellow squash. I need to pick that squash. It's probably no good at this point. See how you turn your head for a few minutes and it gets away from you. That's very large. I'll pick that this evening. So what's the standard size for that squash? This squash, I should have picked it probably about three days ago. Probably right here. 
before it even got that last slant. Mm -hmm. And see, at this point, it could be kind of, you know, hard or wooden. This is my eggplant. Well, I actually have two. You'll see the bloom too. That's an eggplant. It's going to develop. We've already harvested one the other night. I try to include a, a picture at the end of this video of our eggplant. And here are my cranberry red beans. And I just planted these about a week, yeah, about a, two weekends ago. No, I said maybe a week and a half ago I planted these. These were actually, I actually just harvested them and I had no intention of planting beans this late into the season, but when I harvested my corn, which you will remember was in this spot where you see the mustard greens and the uh, peanuts, I harvested it all out, cleaned it out, and when I picked the beans off of the pole, I realized they were germinating in the pots while they were still on the pole. They were starting to root, so I was like, well, I didn't want them to go to waste, so I just went on and planted them, you know. But they're doing really well here. And I have a, another habanero. It seems to be doing well. I felt it last night, and it's, it's strong. All right, let's go around to the other side. Excuse some of this damage that you see. It is all post from the her the tropical storm. It was my thing, my garden was a wreck. It's coming back and I'm starting to have this time renewal do. This is a serious case right here on these two leaves. I'll just cut these leaves out and spray the rest of the plants. You don't want it to get this far. This is just I just haven't gotten out here. Right here this is one of my Tabasco pepper bushes. You may remember from probably our very first video I said how my peppers had overwintered. This is one of them that started to ripen. And here, the butternut. Some of the butternut squash vines. It's going to mature. We should get a good size from that one. I've already been harvesting these for a couple of weeks now. This is a beat up sunflower. I'll let this dry and then I'll go ahead and harvest the head. Maybe before the birds get to it. <laughs> this is my kitty pool experiment number two. You may remember it from another video I did back in May. The peanuts are doing so well in this pool. I just hope it's deep enough for me to get a good harvest. But they are blooming already, as you can see. And when these blooms fall off into the soil there, you can just, I can just bury them a little bit and that's what becomes the peanut. When it falls into the soil, you cover the bloom up. Oh, so the bloom drops off? The bloom drops off and when it gets into the soil, you cover it up and it becomes, it's becoming a good. These, this is what's left of the mustard greens. They're starting to bulk, so I know it's summer and it's hot, and I can probably I need to go ahead and just probably just clean this, harvest what I have here, and clean this pool out and just fertilize, prep the soil, or whatever wants to plant in the fall time. These are these are about done. I did plant them a little late, so I, I'm not surprised. Right here, my sweet potatoes. I planted these slips back in April. I have a five-gallon bucket and a large pot. I'm not sure the size of this. Maybe about four gallons, looking at it. They're doing well. And again, this is where the corn was. I just put these pools in here. No I have two corn plants, actually. That plants it late. There's half some. My other corn got about nine to ten feet tall. Up here's my okra. Cucumber. Just one there. Up here's some okra. I had probably close to 40 plants, but with the weather and 
my beloved furry friends. This is all I have left. Maybe about a good 20 reproducing plants. I need to harvest this over. Oh, this is almost actually too big at this point because it would be wooden if you don't harvest it soon enough. So what kind of okra is this? This is the Clemson Spineless. Next year I want to try the um, jalapeno variety. No, I'm sorry, it's jambalaya variety. I heard that it's, it's a, you know, a heavier producer. We'll see. All right here is one of the sunflowers that was left. You see how tall it is. It's very tall. So I'm happy with the sunflower head. I'm gonna just let it dry out and you can harvest the seeds. I should have staked these, I will next time, but I didn't. <laughs> and you can see here the cucumbers are using it as a support as a trellis, so and they're doing really well. I do have some powdery mildew on the cucumbers also. Well, that's pretty much it for this bed. Let's head over to the watermelon. So, how big is this bed? I'm just sort of panning around and looking, looking for where your tomatoes are, which is at one end to over here, where you have what, like a, like some kind of a, where you have your peanuts here, and I don't know that kind of tree. So how large is this garden? This right here is a black tropical as an ornamental plant. Okay. Uh, this size bed is, I believe it's a 18 by 28, if I remember correctly. We just added 10 feet onto it this year. These are some chives. I just kind of let go wherever you can see they're exploding out of this pot, but I haven't done anything with them. I just let them grow. <laughs> Right here is another one of the bushes that did not die over the winter. It's, this is my jalapeno. They overwintered. I just pulled them up to the back of the house. And I guess the heat from the house kind of helped keep it from freezing. This right here is some ornamental plants. These are called daisy trees. These get probably about eight feet, eight to nine feet tall. And they put out little daisy flowers. It's literally what they are, daisy trees. And you see Fido has been nibbling. Yeah. Gotta love him. <laughs> right here are some of the cranberry red beans that I spoke about earlier. These were planted earlier in the season. And I can show you what they actually look like. Aren't they beautiful? This one's actually starting to germinate on the vine. So I need to go ahead and pick this. Yep, there it is. The um, cranberry red beans are actually a Native American heirloom bean. I had to order those. So, because I had never heard of them before and I just wanted to try, you know, a different bean that I've never had. I like them. They're easy to grow. More dieback. I need to come through and clean this out. The heat, storm damage. And then you can see powdery mildew. Yeah. I have some work to do. This is another Tabasco bush. And believe it or not, I have seen birds eating these peppers. Now, what possesses them to eat these hot things, I don't know. But you can see some damage right here. And you can see, I call this a bush of fire. It is, I mean, you just got on this. This is a, this is a big one. Right here, my banana wow, yeah, that is a pretty big plant. That's, that's a lot. It is. And this is the difference between being in a pot and in the ground. I put this in the ground and I promise you it just looked like little twigs, little stump of twiggies. And it just grew like this since March. These are my banana trees. They're actually in a pot. I would love to be able to put them in the ground and I will probably actually get some bananas. Whenever they freeze in the winter time, I just cut them back to the ground and they come back even larger. So I have several banana trees in here. They're strong and healthy. Well, let's look at the watermelon. Right here's the watermelon patch. It's just exploded in the last few days. This, all of this is not even out here a few days ago. Let's 
sunflowers I planted to contain and plant and Atlas and Fido again, nibbling. <laughs> I had a melon. Let me try to find it for you. Okay, here goes one. There's a little melon. So hopefully it got pollinated by the bees and you should have a watermelon. I'm really pleased with it. This is really my second time attempting to grow watermelon since I've been gardening. So I'm anxious to see what happens. So I'm not sure the variety. I got it from the local farm store and when I went back to ask them, they couldn't remember either. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, let me show you the corn stalks that I uh, cut down out of the garden. I'm going to just dry them out and maybe use them in a fall decoration. The dogs, of course, have been playing in them, but I'm drying the corn stalk. I feel like the smell of it. To dry them out and cool them down and I don't know maybe to use it with some hay bales as a decoration or something and maybe at our next festival as part of our decor who knows well that's it thanks for watching have a great evening thank you from Clark's Cookery <laughs>